All right, hello. I'm Colleen Kroniger from the Department of Nutrition at Case Western Reserve. Today we're going to be discussing the pentose pathway um, and how it relates and how it's regulated. It's a slightly different pathway than um, most carbohydrate metabolism. So when you eat, you have glucose. Glucose will then enter into the body. It'll enter into the cell and be phosphorylated by hexokinase in the muscle and glucokinase in the liver. Now the phosphate's on glucose 6-phosphate. And glucose 6-phosphate can go down the glycolytic pathway. But another pathway, which we're going to talk about today, is called the pentose pathway. And this is a pathway that is used to make substrates that are needed for other pathways. So the, there's an oxidative part of this pathway. And the oxidative part goes from glucose 6-phosphate that we just made to ribulose 5-phosphate. This is an irreversible reaction. It generates NADPH. NADPH is necessary for synthesis of fatty acids. It's necessary for glutathione reduction. Um, and it's also for other reactions as well. This oxidative part of the pathway is limited. By that, I mean that only when you're making fatty acids and using up your NADPH to generate more NADP will this pathway proceed. There are three enzymes that are required in this part of the pathway. The first one is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. It requires NADP, and it's the first step to make that NADPH. Glucose 6-phosphate will be converted to 6-phosphogluconolactone, and the next enzyme is lactinase. That will, is a hydration reaction that makes 6-phosphogluconate. And finally, the third enzyme is 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase. This enzyme also generates NADPH. So this is the, re the irreversible part. Ribulose 5-phosphate, important for um, the synthesis of nucleotides. So from that part, first part of the pathway, you're making ribose, ribulose. This is a precursor for nucleotide synthesis. The second part of the pathway is taking that ribulose 5-phosphate back to fructose 6-phosphate. This is non-oxidative, and this part of the pathway is reversible, so it's very different than the first part that I just talked about. If you are, um, say, a cancer patient or a rapid growth and you need an olive ribulose 5-phosphate for nucleotide synthesis, the oxidative part of the pathway will proceed forward. However, if you don't have excess calories and you only need nucleotides, you can take those carbons from glycolysis and bring them to ribulose 5-phosphate. This non-oxidative part of the pathway is basically, I call it shuffling of the carbons. You're taking five carbon molecules and you're reshuffling them to three carbons and seven carbons, and then again back to four carbons and six carbons. It re-enters back into the glycolytic pathway either at fructose 6-phosphate or glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate both in the glycolytic pathway. This is glycolysis. The important part of this is that it's a reshuffling. The enzyme is a transketolase. And this transketolase has a vitamin requirement, thiamine pyrophosphate. The non-exidative part of the pathway will not continue if you don't have that uh, vitamin requirement. So in summary, you have an oxidative part of the pathway and a non-oxidative part of the pathway. It's different than any of the other carbohydrate pathways because it is limited, it's not regulated. That means that only when you are generating and synthesizing things will these pathways be um, active.